The Truthful Dictionary Vocabulary Builder. You'll remember these words, words 1 through 10. The average American uses only 600 different words to communicate. And we have half a million words in our English language. Well, I've decided to do something about it. Just 10 new words per day, and you can increase your vocabulary substantially in just one month. I not only give you a new vocabulary word to wield like a sword, but I tell you how to use that word to attack your oppressors. Now, is that productive or what? You decide. First word, abstemious. This is an adjective. It means eating and drinking in moderation. Abstemious people do not gorge themselves. Unless, of course, the taxpayers are paying for it all. Then they have second helpings of everything. Even their dogs get filet mignon at the taxpayer's expense, while common people eat hamburgers, hot dogs, and sausages, all the garbage parts of the animal that abstemious people don't want because they're enjoying the free ride. On top of all of that, the abstemious ones criticize common people for eating hot dogs, sausages, and who knows what's in it, hamburgers, as if we had a choice. If we happen to catch round steak on sale and buy that instead, the computer systems would spy on us and notify the IRS and the next morning the IRS will be knocking on your door trying to extract a pint of blood from you for earning too much and being able to afford steak on sale. Abstemious. Remember that word. It might come in handy when you're talking about the gluttons in politics and government. Next word. Acumen. It's a noun. It means... Keen insight, shrewdness. There are two things which made Bill Gates rich. Number one, his business acumen. Number two, his total disregard for federal laws. Janet Reno prosecuted Gates for breaking the Sherman Antitrust Act and fined him $1 million a day. But his business acumen told him that it was still profitable because he was earning $34 million per day by breaking the federal law, the Sherman Antitrust Act. And unlike common people who have to go to jail for breaking the law, Bill Gates never spent one day in prison where he belongs. A cumin, remember that word, it might come in handy when you're talking about the laws of the land and who has enough business acumen to get away with breaking federal laws. Next word, ameliorate. It's a verb and it means to improve. There are several government programs that can make you think that they're actually trying to ameliorate the conditions of low income, hamburger eating slaves who can't afford a decent place to live in this once great land called America? Ameliorate, remember that word. It might come in handy when you're discussing why the lower classes just can't get their act together and make it work for them in the same way that it does for the parasitic classes who pass laws and do nothing to ameliorate your ability to afford a decent place to live. The next word is a plum. It's a noun. It means poise and self-confidence. When you have unlimited power and money, people tend to mistake your arrogance for a plum. In other words, poise and confidence. We all envy the queen because she owns the land under Washington, D.C. She owns the White House, Congress, and the Supreme Court. She even owns the puppet president. She only owns one-sixth of the world. No wonder she's confident. She's poised to take over the other five-sixths. Our puppet president works for her, but you wouldn't know it. She didn't even invite him to the royal wedding. She had him come later and come in through the rear. 
By the way, did anyone ever find the puppet president's real birth certificate? Some people mistake his arrogance for a plum. He's confident because he knows who his boss is and he does what he's told. A plum, remember that word. It might come in handy when you're speaking of the puppet presidents, the queen, and other slave masters who own everything, including you. Word number five, assiduous. It's an adjective. It means diligent, consistently applying oneself. The secret government never gives up on their assiduous pursuit of control over Americans. They have cameras at Walmart now, and they can watch you entering the store and exiting. And if you buy too much, you might be doing too well, and they'll have to arrange it so that life is not so easy for the middle class, whatever's left of them. Assiduous, remember that word. It might come in handy when you speak about the Illuminati and the controls they have put in place to track you and monitor your every movement. Number six, awry. It's an adverb. It means twisted to one side or not even. The founders of this country set out for a more perfect union, but something went awry. Like an hourglass which represents power, it began with all the power in the hands of people and the hourglass was filled with sand at the top. But in time, the sand fell down and settled in the bottom half, which represents government power. And the only way you can get the power into the hands of the people now is to defy gravity and make sand fall up. The plans of the founding fathers have gone awry indeed. Awry, remember that word. It might come in handy when you're talking about the fall of the American empire. Word number seven, baleful. This is an adjective. It means evil in intent, ominous. Both candidates have the same baleful look to me. It seems like a choice between two evils where are the constitutional candidates and why are we required to select the lesser of two evils when both are equally ominous? Baleful, remember that word. It might come in handy when discussing who you're going to vote for in the next fraudulent election. Word number eight, blithe. It's an adjective. It means joyous. Before the Nazi takeover of America, you could see blithe Americans boarding planes. Now the Gestapo is there to touch your private parts, pretending to be looking for the real terrorists while they dismantle your mind and condition you for the slavery that's coming and the blithe environment at the airport has been replaced by Adolf Hitler and his henchmen. Blythe, remember that word. It might come in handy when your friends are discussing joining the Nazi party so they can enjoy luxuries like running water in the home and electricity. Word number nine, brusquely. It's an adjective. It means abruptly, rudely. Oh, this is a good word. The TSA doesn't have to be nice. They can talk to you brusquely because they have the backing of the Nazi government, which represents ultimate force and power over the citizens. If you ask questions about 9-11, you're going to be treated brusquely by government. Ask where are the constitutional candidates in this presidential election? And again, they are rude and treat you brusquely. Brusquely. Remember that word. Might come in handy when you fly and you're looking for the perfect word to describe how badly you were treated by the Gestapo. I mean the TSA. They are part of the Department of Homeland Security, you know. And when you call them, it helps if you speak German. Last word for today's lesson is bucolic. It's an adjective and it means rustic or of the countryside. Take a good look at the bucolic quarters of your city because that's where you're going to be living when you lose your home and you'll be looking for wild berries to stay alive. 
while the government fills your ears with more propaganda telling you that unemployment is only 3% and the economy is doing great and the Nazis have created 300,000 jobs last month, all IRS and CIA jobs. Seems everybody is working for the Nazis. Bucolic. Remember that word. It might come in handy when you're out of a job and you can't afford gas to get to the unemployment line and all you have is the bucolic scenes of a homeless person. Thank you for listening. The Truthful Dictionary Vocabulary Builder You'll remember these words, words 1 through 10. The average American uses only 600 different words to communicate. And we have half a million words in our English language. Well, I've decided to do something about it. Just 10 new words per day, and you can increase your vocabulary substantially in just one month. I not only give you a new vocabulary word, to wield like a sword, but I tell you how to use that word to attack your oppressors. Now, is that productive or what? You decide. First word, abstemious, as if we had a choice. If we happen to catch round steak on sale and buy that instead, the computer systems would spy on us and notify the IRS and the next morning the IRS will be knocking on your door trying to extract a pint of blood from you for earning too much and being able to afford steak. This is an adjective. It means eating and drinking in moderation. Abstemious people do not gorge themselves. Unless, of course, the taxpayers are paying for it all. Then they have second helpings of everything. Even their dogs get filet mignon at the taxpayer's expense, while common people eat hamburgers, hot dogs, and sausages, all the garbage parts of the animal that abstemious people don't want because they're enjoying the free ride. On top of all of that, the abstemious ones criticize common people for eating hot dogs, sausages, and who knows what's in it, hamburgers.